using a medium weight of worsted weight yarn and size 5 millimeter knitting needles. Begin with a long tail cast on, cast on 3 stitches, and make sure you're leaving plenty of yarn to weave in the yarn tail later, so I say at least 4 inches. Row 1 is a knit row, so just knit those 3 stitches and turn. Row 2 is going to be a right side row. I like to put a stitch marker in my right side row when I'm working garter stitch so that I can remember which is the right side row. So I'm just going to stick that stitch marker in there and leave it there. Row 2 is also an increase row. I'm going to knit front and back in the first stitch and then knit front and back again. then knit the last stitch. So I have increased two stitches and I have five stitches. I'll knit three rows. Now it's time to do an increase row. I'll knit front and back in the first stitch, knit to the last two stitches. So I knit until I have two stitches remaining knit front and back in that stitch and then knit the last stitch. So I've increased two stitches once again. Again, knit three rows. I worked an increased row, then I knit three rows plain. I need to repeat those last four rows two times. When I finish the star point, I have 11 stitches on my needle and I've worked a wrong side row. I'm ready to begin a right side row. At this point, I'll cut the yarn and set these stitches aside. I can leave them on the needle or I can put them on a holder and come back to them. Make five of these star points, but on the last one, do not cut the yarn. I have switched to a circular needle so you can see all five star points here. You can do this on a straight needle. It's just a little bit easier on a circular. But there's one thing I do want to show you before we move on to the next step, which is joining all these five star points. You want to make sure that they're set up correctly. You'll notice the last one I did is here and the yarn tail is still attached. That's what I want. And it's on the right edge, ready to work a right side row. Here's my yarn tail from the next one, and it's on the right edge. And here's my yarn tail from the next one, and it's on the right edge. But somehow, when I transferred these two star points to my circular needle, I ended up having the yarn tail on the left side. Now, I know I did the correct number of rows here. What I need to do is switch these so that the yarn tail ends up on the right side. I can just slide these stitches to another needle. I'm just going to slip them off here. Taking care to get every one of them. And I'm just going to let those stay on hold there for a minute because I need to switch this one too. My favorite way to do this when I have just a few stitches and I need to switch them is I'm going to sort of pinch them with my forefinger and my middle finger and pull the needle out and watch. Nothing happens to those stitches, but they stay oriented the way I want. Now I can come in from the other side and just slide my needle right in there and grab the stitches. So now those stitches are oriented the way I want them to be. If I slide these stitches back on the same way, it's going to, they're, they're still going to be on the wrong side. So I'm going to do that same thing here. I'm going to pull those off and slide them back on here. And now I have all my stitches oriented the way I need them to be ready to work right side rows. You can count and see that you have 55 stitches here.
to work my joining row, I'm going to knit across 11 stitches, and this is my working yarn that I kept attached. So I'm going to knit those 11 stitches. and then place a marker. So I'm going to put a marker right here. These markers are going to be very important as we do our shaping. Then knit the next 11 and place a marker. I'll do that all the way across. On the last repeat, I just knit 11 to the end. So I have markers between each of these star point sections. I can tug on those yarn tails a little bit. I'll be weaving those in later. Now that I've joined them all, I'm going to turn and work a decrease row. This happens to be a wrong side row, but we're working the decreases on the wrong side this first time. The decrease row is slip, slip, knit. So I'm doing an SSK decrease knit to two stitches before marker. So I knit all the way across until I have two stitches left before my marker. Knit those two stitches together and slip marker. I'll repeat that three more times. On the last one I'll do an SSK knit to the last two stitches, and then knit two together. Turn and repeat that decrease row. At this point you have 45 stitches. You're going to do that decrease one more time all the way across. So this is a right side row this time. Row four is a knit row. Just knit all the stitches and slip the markers as you come to them. For rows five and six, just repeat those last two rows once more. Do a decrease row and then a plain knit row. Row seven is another decrease row. And we're decreasing pretty quickly here. You can see you only have three stitches between markers when you have finished row seven. Row eight is a plain knit row, but as you come to each marker, just remove the marker. We don't need those markers anymore. So here we are at the end of row eight. We've removed our markers, and we're going to do one more decrease row with a double decrease, the centered double, double decrease or S2KP decrease, which is slip two together knitwise, knit one, and then pass those two slipped stitches over. I'm going to do that all the way across. When I've completed that row, I only have five stitches left. I'm going to turn and knit those five stitches one more time. And it looks like a mess right now. I'm going to cut my yarn and leave a long enough tail for seaming here. If I move these to the center, you can kind of see that stars is taking shape. But now we need to weave in some ends and sew a seam. Thread the yarn tail into the tapestry needle and then put the tapestry needle through those last five stitches so that you're drawing that yarn tail through the five stitches and making it nice and tight to close up that center. I always like to go through another time just to make sure that it's going to be secure. 
So here we have our star and we need to sew up the seam from the center out to where the point shaping takes place. I'm going to do this with a mattress stitch seam working from the front, so from the right side, so I can see what's going on. Now we've talked about right side and wrong side. You may turn this over and decide that you like the way the other side looks better, and if so, call that the right side. You haven't woven any woven in any ends yet. So if you like, you can make that the right side. It doesn't really matter. Garter stitch is reversible. To do mattress stitch, I'm going to work back and forth from side to side. I'm going under a bump on one side, so from bottom to top, but keeping it keeping the needle on the front of the fabric where I can see it, across, and then over on the other side, under a bump, bottom to top, and just work back and forth. I'm not drawing these together much right now, so you can see what I'm doing, working from side to side. Now, once I've done a few stitches, I can draw those up, and it will close up that seam nicely and I want to adjust it just so it feels like just all the other stitches around it. Got a couple more here. If I'm doing it right I'm going to come out with the points matching. I could have put a pin there if I'd wanted to. Now it looks like I missed a little spot here so I'm going to go back and since I now have committed to that being the right side, I'm going to just go back and close this up there. So I've sewn that seam and now I need to weave in ends. I have ends to weave in on the points and I have loose ends to weave in right here on each um, where the points were joined. These are loose stitches where when I did that joining round I just had those extra yarn tails. I might take a stitch across the seam here to tighten that up a bit and secure it and then just weave in my ends up and down back and forth. You want to do it more than just up and down like this. You want to go in a couple of different directions. You might go in a diagonal manner. Whatever you need to do, weave in at least two inches worth of yarn tail. That's why you wanted to leave at least a four inch yarn tail so that you have plenty to weave in. You'll want to weave in all the ends on the ends of your star points and for that you're going to bring it to the wrong side because it's probably poking out the right side and weave in securely. Make sure you're weaving in at least two inches so you may have to go back and forth further into your star point to get that end nice and secure. If you'd like more instruction like this, subscribe to my YouTube channel. Check out the links in the video notes for other ways you can find me. Thanks for watching.